Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So then came an experimental evidence to prove how exactly DNA replicates and this experiment was performed by Messelson Stahl and it is known as Messelson Stahl experiment. So what was done in this experiment? So let us first understand the experiment. So let us see what was done in Messelson Stahl experiment. So this experiment was to prove the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication. Now by now we already know what is the semi-conservative nature. So what was done in order to prove that? It was experimented with the bacteria E. coli, that is Escherichia coli, and it was performed in the year 1958. Now, what was being done was that, first of all, even before the experiment was carried out, E. coli were grown in two different mediums. So one set of E. coli was grown in a medium with nitrogen 15. Now nitrogen has two isotopes. Nitrogen exists in these two isotopes, nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15. So the atomic mass is different in these cases. It has 14 and this has 15. However, none of these isotopes were radioactive. Both of them were non-radioactive. But if you compare these two, nitrogen 14 is the one which is which is a more abundant isotope and nitrogen 15 is little uh, less available or less abundant when compared to nitrogen 14. And also uh, another distinction is that uh, DNA, now nitrogen is a major constituent of DNA, right? So if the nitrogen is being replaced so the DNA will have changes for example if the nitrogen is radioactive so the DNA will become radioactive now if the nitrogen is non-radioactive DNA will be non-radioactive now if the nitrogen has nitrogen 15 isotope so the DNA will have the property of nitrogen 15 because nitrogen is a part of DNA so it has been observed that DNA with nitrogen 15 isotope is heavier than that of nitrogen 14 isotope so, what was done in this case was one set of E. coli was grown in a medium with nitrogen 15. So, it is very obvious that the E. coli which are being grown in this medium, the DNA of this set of E. coli will have nitrogen 50 in its constituent and as a result, this DNA will be heavier than the one which is grown in a medium with nitrogen 14. So, there was another set of the uh, E. coli which was grown in a medium with nitrogen 14. So here again the DNA of these E. coli will have nitrogen 14. So it was observed that nitrogen 15 will have heavier uh, than will be heavier than that of nitrogen 14 DNA. So how to get it that nitrogen 15 was heavier and nitrogen 14 was lighter or how do we know that so for that we have to perform the process of centrifugation what happens in centrifugation so if a mixture is being rotated at a very high speed what happens is the heavier particles tend to settle down closer and the lighter ones move farther from the center that is called the process of centrifugation so basically if you see this green color denote nitrogen 14 and blue color denote nitrogen 15. So here this circumference which you see denotes the presence of nitrogen 14 DNA and this blue color which you see denotes the presence of nitrogen 15 DNA. So now the nitrogen 15 DNA was closer because it was heavier. So nitrogen 15 DNA was found to be heavier than that of nitrogen 14 DNA. So this is what was observed with centrifugation. So basically what was seen here was that, that if the isotope of nitrogen is different in two DNA, then we can distinguish the DNA by their weight. If it is heavier, that means it has nitrogen 15. If it is lighter, that means it has nitrogen 14. So this is going to be the basis of the experiment which is performed by Messelson and Stahl. So now let us look at the actual experiment, what he actually did. So he, he allowed E. coli to be grown in a medium with nitrogen 15 for several generations. So when we say several generations, it is like you start from the parental generation, then you get the first filial generation, then second filial generation and the process continues. So that is how the process was continued for several generations with nitrogen 15. 
So what happened? All the E. coli which are being produced in this medium will have DNA with nitrogen 15. That is the blue DNA. That is, it is not about blue or green. Right now for convenience, I am using the blue color DNA for nitrogen 15. Again, E. coli with only nitrogen 15 in their DNA were transferred to a medium with nitrogen 14. So now these E. coli, so now these E. coli have the blue DNA in them. They do not have any green DNA because they have all been grown in a medium with nitrogen 15. So now the E. coli with these blue DNA, they have been transferred to a medium which has nitrogen 14. So now what will happen? So now when they are grown in nitrogen 14 medium, will they have green DNA? That means will their blue DNA turn green or they will have a mixture of blue and green or it will still have the blue DNA. So how will it be? So now the E. coli cells were allowed to divide and now what was done was even though they were allowed to uh, divide for multiple generations but the sample of E. coli were taken periodically in between like after generation 1 it was taken again after generation 2 E. coli samples were taken just to see what are the changes that are taking place in the DNA with each generation. That is, after, after the first generation, how is the DNA? After the second generation, how is the DNA? And if you want to know that, you will actually need to collect sample periodically. After a certain period of time, you need to collect sample. Again, you allow the culture to go on, allow the DNA to keep on, I mean, you allow the E. coli to keep on growing, but then you will have to take samples over a period of time. Now it was seen that for one complete replication that is to complete one generation E. coli takes around 20 minutes. So that means the first sample that you will have to take is after 20 minutes. Now the next generations will be produced after 40 minutes. So so on and so forth. So similarly you can collect samples. So samples were taken and DNA was extracted periodically as cell division continued. So this cell division kept on happening over a period of time, but it was ensured that the sample is being collected for every generation. Now why was that sample collected? So that we get to know what kind of DNA are being generated in each generation, right? So this was the experiment that was actually performed. So now the question was, what kind of DNA are being produced in each generation? So let us see what were the results. Now in generation 1, when I say generation 1, that means after one complete round of replication. That means the sample which was taken exactly after 20 minutes. So what was seen in that sample? So how, how do we know how is that DNA? Exactly, by the process of centrifugation because now we know that if the process of centrifugation is being performed, now by looking at where the DNA samples are being dispersed, we can actually see whether it is nitrogen 14 or it is nitrogen 15 DNA. So for generation 1, it was found that DNA was found to have an intermediate density after one replication. That means the density was neither matching to the nitrogen 14 density, the density was nor matching to the nitrogen 15 density. So it was in between nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15. So that means it has mixed of both blue and green. So that was the conclusion after generation 1. So that means generation 1 had both the colors. It has partially nitrogen 14. It has partially nitrogen 15. That is why their densities were also intermediate between the two values. What happened after generation 2? That means the sample which we took after 40 minutes. What happens there? So here it was observed that equal amounts of DNA with two different densities were found. So here the density was not intermediate. So half of the samples had were blue and half of the samples were green. So somewhat like this. So half of them had two different densities were observed. So some of the samples had the density it's not some, we will say half of the samples had the density green. That means the nitrogen 14 density and remaining half had the intermediate densities and the blue density is gone. That means nitrogen 15 density is all gone by second generation. What is left over is the intermediate density in 50% of them and the nitrogen 14 density in the remaining 50%. So this was the observation. So now can you relate all these observations to the experiments which were performed by Mendel 
with the pea plants. So there also you saw similar sort of um, outputs coming out in F1 and F2 generations, right? And that is why it was told while we were discussing about the criteria of a genetic material, it was told that the genetic material should be such that it should follow the Mendelian, it should display Mendelian characters. So this is what that meant. Anyways, so here, so what, what interesting thing did we observe here? So here we saw that, so what was the conclusion out of these results which were observed in generation 1 and generation 2? So let us look at the conclusion in little more detail. So overall in the experiment, we started with the blue DNA, that is the nitrogen 15 DNA. And then we found in the first generation, they were all intermediate between nitrogen 14 and 15 that is mix of both and in the second generation we found that half of them were the intermediate ones and the remaining half were the nitrogen 14 that is the green DNAs. So quite surprising results but what did this result tell us about the type of replication or the mode of replication of DNA? The first thing that was observed was that intermediate density existence so something called hybrid existence that is a mix mixture of both neither blue nor green so presence of this hybrid told that it was not conservative hypothesis so it cannot be conservative hypothesis why not because in conservative hypothesis the generation one should have either been completely blue or it should have either been completely green there should be no concept of intermediate because as per conservative hypothesis the entire DNA acts as a template. So anything that will get copied from a blue DNA has to be blue. There is no option of having green or green and blue mix or anything like that. So one thing was clear that the mode of replication of DNA is not conservative. The next thing was the presence of nitrogen 14 DNA in generation 2. So let me write here. This is generation 1 and this is generation 2. <coughs> So in generation 2, we found green DNAs. Now, due to the presence of green DNAs, it showed that it cannot be dispersive hypothesis as well. That Why? Because as per dispersive hypothesis, each DNA should be a mixture of both. You remember, as per dispersive hypothesis, each DNA should have been little bit of green, then little bit of blue. Again, little bit of green and little bit of blue. So you should not have had completely green or completely blue DNAs. So each DNA helix should have a density value that is same but here there were two types of DNAs which were observed. One was the intermediate one. So here if you look at the centrifugation result so this would be the nitrogen 14. I'm sorry this would be the nitrogen 15. This would be the nitrogen 14 and this middle one was the intermediate density. So as per the result which was observed in this experiment, half of them were intermediate density and the remaining half were nitrogen 14 density. But as per the dispersive hypothesis, all of them should have had the same density and that density should be should not be nitrogen 14, it should not be nitrogen 15, in fact it should not be intermediate as well, it should have been some other value and all of them should have had the same value. That is what was told by dispersive hypothesis. So that means it was not dispersive hypothesis as well. So what is left over? Left over is semi-conservative hypothesis. And it was found that semi-conservative hypothesis could explain the entire experimental result. It could explain generation 1 because as per it, these two blue strands will separate. So each of them will get one one blue strand, right? Now, the green strand will get created and the green strand will not be identical to blue strand because they will be complementary to each other. That is why the two strands are not identical. So, one is blue and one is green. One is blue, one is green. So, that is how the first generation result can be explained. So, in a very similar way, the second generation result can also be explained because again in this case also the strands are going to separate out. Now, when the strands separate out, is it is possible that the other strand which gets created can be green, it can be blue, right? So, by making use of semi-conservative hypothesis where each strand had its own identity, the entire experimental result of Messelson and Stahl could be explained. 
and it was also seen that DNA follows the Mendelian characters. So this is how it was concluded that DNA replication is semi-conservative replication. So finally, based on this experimental result, it was proved that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. So even though so many hypotheses were proposed, but finally it was seen that it is semi-conservative. So what will happen in semi-conservative? The strands will separate out. So each strand will act as a template based on which the new strands will be created on both of them. So now the question is, do we need anything else for the process of replication? So till now we got to know that DNA replication has to take place and the process by which DNA, DNA replication takes place is the semi-conservative mode of replication. So till here it is clear. But now how exactly the replication takes place? So we need to understand that. Now for that we also need to see what are the raw materials required. Like for example, if you want to prepare a cake, you need the raw materials for it. You need uh, flour, you need uh, the vanilla essence, you need whatever are the ingredients, you need all of them first. Only then you can prepare a cake. Similarly, in order to understand or in order that the process of DNA replication take place, what are the things that are required? Do we need anything else other than DNA also for the process of replication? So that that is what we will look at now. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.